My name is Sam Wagner and I am a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today I wish to discuss climate change. What else? <laughs> climate change may be an opportunity, is my central thesis. The rich countries of the industrialized world are to blame for climate change. Yet, shamelessly, they hector and preach to the developing world, which is bearing the brunt of the consequences of their misdeeds, past and present. The typically sanctimonious French President Macron says that no country should have to choose between, I'm quoting, reducing poverty and protecting the planet. Grandiloquence aside, this is the kind of incomprehensible tripe that the West habitually prefers in lieu of hard cash and concrete planning. The new Global Financing Pact Summit in Paris aims to square multiple circles, ease debt burdens, fund green initiatives, and ameliorate poverty, all without committing lucre to these lofty goals. Macron called for a greater, greater involvement of the private sector, fair chance, <laughs> to remove any doubt as to the reluctance of the public sector, also known as governments, the French Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs has warned that global public debt has reached unprecedented levels in the wake of the pandemic. One third of developing countries and two thirds of low income ones are now faced with excessive debt. The trend of poverty reduction over recent decades has stalled Says, says the Ministry. Rather than deal with the emergency of global warming, the summit proposed a new effective international financial architecture, which is supposed to miracul miraculously provide more resources, even as it, and I'm quoting, shelters the most vulnerable countries from shocks, whatever that may mean. <laughs> One more nonsensical oxymoron realize sustainable development goals while financing the energy transition. Yeah, right. Developing countries are aghast. Their Bridgetown initiative is a desperate, last-ditch attempt to veer the conversation in a direction that is at least less inane, if not more productive. The core problem is the cost of financing. It renders green projects and debt repayment unfeasible. Loss and damage is the uninspiring title given to reparations claimed by the suffering poor from the polluting rich. The latter pledged 100 billion US dollars, which have yet to materialize. None of this unseemly haggling is going anywhere, nor is any of it relevant. Climate change is here to stay an inexorable process, an inalienable feature of the future. A fact, <laughs> rather than squander billions on futile attempts to reverse climate change or to halt it, we need to begin to learn to coexist with it in the long term. <clears throat> we should take an inventory of what we know and act upon it resolutely, mitigation. Emissions from fossil fuel combustion should be tamed, captured, stored, sunk and sequestered. Aerosols to be further studied in conjunction with global dimming and ozone, ozone depletion. Measures for population control and family planning enhanced. Alternative and re renewable fuels should be studied and incentives provided to energy efficient clean and green technologies. Cement manufacture should be tweaked, cap-and-trade or tax schemes implemented on the national, corporate and individual levels, weather resistance, uh, weather resistant, energy conserving and green construction technologies pioneered. The diets of livestock should be adapted to restrict biological emissions. Deforestation and reforestation should be rationalized, as should be land use. Drought-related indigenous agricultural and water management knowledge and crop varieties 
should be preserved. Coastal flood defenses erected or strengthened. Cities should be relocated inland. And weather monitoring capacity should be extended and modernized. These measures make good sense, whatever the urgency of the problem facing us may be. But we should invest the bulk of our scarce resources in research and innovation. We should accept that climate change is inevitable and we should work out ways of harnessing it to our benefit. We should come up with new agricultural methods and strains, new types of tourism, novel, novel ir irrigation techniques, water desalination, diversion, transport and allocation schemes, ways of sustaining biological diversity and of helping the human body adapt and cope to extreme weather, and global plans to cope with energy production problems, poverty and disease triggered by global warming. For the next few centuries, climate change is largely irreversible as the IPCC essentially admits. To think otherwise is completely delusional. We would do better to reimagine our existence on this planet. We'd, be, we'd do better to adapt. As temperatures rise in certain locales and drop in others, by the way, new economic activities and routes of commerce will be made possible or rendered feasible. New types of produce and forests will flourish. New technologies will be developed to cater to an emerging and growing set of needs. We will do well to not consider global warming a crisis, but reconceive of it as a massive change or even an opportunity. The initial costs of every transformation and transition in human history have been steep. Recall the Industrial Revolution and more recently, the transition from communism to capitalism. Climate change is not likely to be the only exception. Such a massive realignment implies severe disruption and great distress. But invariably, tectonic shifts are followed by an extended period of creativity and growth. This time will not be different.